This is More Than Construction, a journey group podcast about building community. Hello, and welcome back to More Than Construction. I'm your host, Nathan Walter, along with my co-host, Aaron Ike. And today we're going to be starting a new series examining Journey's key support teams. So the teams that work behind the scenes in our office that help out each of our divisions that we've already learned about and really help them do what they do best, help make things safer, more efficient, and all around deliver a better product to our partners and our clients. And so today uh, we're going to begin with our VDC department, which is virtual design and construction. And we have joining us today, Jamie Muchiknaus and Adam Scholes, the the two experts in the office on that topic. Correct. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for joining us today, guys. I'm excited about this episode. I've been excited to talk about VDC since this podcast was just an idea. This is one of the one of the areas that I'm like, this is so fascinating. This is such an interesting topic. I think it's something that really sets journey apart. And uh, as as we examine this idea of what it is to do more than construction, this is it. I mean, this is this is really cool stuff. And so I'm I'm personally excited and glad you guys are here. So thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having us. It's a lot of fun. So Jamie, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you come to be a journey? What do you do here? You know, my journey here kind of started in architecture, drafting, modeling, um, working in different projects across the United States. So after that kind of 20 years of doing that, it was time for a little bit of a change in probably 2011. I then went to work for a uh, University of South Dakota doing that managing of the construction projects um, more from the owner's perspective. I had worked with Sioux Falls Construction back in the day, nice. you know, and um, had done a couple projects with them. And it was just an awesome experience from a design side of being able to work with them. And, Absolutely. And it was, it was life-changing. You know, honestly, it was one of those things that when a position came available to come to Journey, it was like, I want to be there, yeah. you know? And so right. been here now at Journey for eight years Wow, and been having tons of fun since been here. So that's awesome. Very cool. And Adam, you are still relatively new here. Uh, Jamie's kind of right hand. I know you were very glad when Adam came on the scene. It was a long time coming. Very much so. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here. So I'm uh, roughly three months in. Nice. Trying to help Jamie free up some time so he can do more, yeah. which is, I don't know how that's possible. He already does a lot here. <laughs> But similar to Jamie, I worked in architecture and previous to the architecture field, I did mechanical and electrical drafting. And then before that, I did a summer of home building. It was a framer. Didn't know what I wanted to do out of high school. Kind of fell into going to Southeast Tech and learning about architecture there and learning AutoCAD. And from that, it has brought me to here. Through architecture, I've worked on several projects. Some of the more complicated ones happen to be projects that Journey built yeah. with us. And I echo what Jamie said. There's really no comparison with working yeah. with Journey. It's just, they just rise above the rest. Yeah. And so when that opportunity came up, it was like, I got to try this. Yeah, absolutely. So a so question, is it easier to build it by hand or virtually? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, there's less thought involved building it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's already figured out. That's an interesting perspective, <laughs> I guess. Oh, I was great. telling Nathan earlier, you know, before Jamie came to Journey or Sioux Falls Construction at that time, Darren always had this CD on his desk and it was the Revit program, which is the program that Jamie primarily does his work in. And that CD, which I think back then was like ten to fifteen thousand, you know, it sat in the same spot <laughs> on his desk for like three years, and we all wondered, like, what are we ever going to do with that CD? Who's going to learn it? I think he always said, "Well, someone's going to learn it someday," <laughs> and obviously nobody was able to even learn it till Jamie came on board. So, so Jamie, did you actually? install that CD on your computer or was it a download by then? It was a download okay. by then. All right, by the time you came on, yep. CDs were obsolete. Darren's probably still has it. In I think you had the option, You had, but you had to, at that time you still had to, you you could either do digital download or you could pay extra to actually have to a To actually discs. have a physical disc. It's like, I don't yeah. want the disc. <laughs> wow. How times have changed. I think the big question 
that we need to set the stage with is what is VDC? I had no clue this even existed before I started working at Journey. And as soon as I got even just a little taste of what it was, I was like, this is incredible. So tell us what virtual design and construction is. I can give you a long answer and a short answer. <laughs> well, we got, we got about 20 minutes. So, you know, short answer is it's a virtual dress rehearsal of construction. You know, I mean, that's really what it is. Long answer, it's really it's a management of models and processes. It's how do we utilize models, information, not only for just the management of the construction, but we can also manage just processes or we can also do, you know, organization of teams and other things with the information with that's within there. So... With it, there's a whole bunch of little pieces that go along with it. But, you know, long story short, it really is. It's about building that building virtually first and mm -hmm. making sure we get all the bugs worked out. Yeah. And then going ahead and constructing it. So this program, having no experience in it, I picture like just very complicated sims or I mean, something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it depends on if you're doing more of the modeling design portions of it or yeah. if you're actually doing the coordination of it. You know, and so we have a lot of different softwares that we use. You know, we probably have, you know, from everything we touch, we probably are touching you know, 15, 20 different pieces of software. Yeah. Okay. For us, our big thing is, is just coordinating. Yeah. You know, it's, it's helping not only our team, but it's our subcontractors just to make sure that everybody visualizes this project, how everything's going to go together, um, that it's going to fit and it's going to be, it's going to work in the, in the field when they're going to put it in. Yeah. I would say that VDC is also digitizing construction. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you have the data, in, in the software format, you can analyze it. You can have programs that extrapolate certain bits that, that might be helpful. For instance, like in architecture, you can actually do a solar analysis on a building and you can know how much it's gonna cost to heat and cool your building wow. for where it's built. Wow. Because the data's there and that information can be unlocked and used. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And so then that can inform the way you build the building, what insulation you use, how thick your walls should be or whatever. Yeah. And it's, you know, like Adam said, it's trying to harness all that information and then who can we help? Yeah. You know, so if, if it's helping with quantity takeoffs and things like that, you know, it's like getting information to our pre-construction department or if it's helping, you know, as Aaron's kind of putting information or his numbers together. It's like, you know, can we help with images and visuals that will help him to, you know, identify some of that stuff. So it's just trying to figure out who we can help and how is one of the biggest things. And once you have that information, you can unlock it in different ways and it, it'll mean something different to other people. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Different perspectives. So who all benefits from this information? It's not only just like I said, our pre-construction department or our PMs or even our superintendents and field guys, because our field guys actually have the power now to have the models and the information on their phones or their iPads. Wow. Or, you know, it's no longer you carrying around rolls of drawings. Yeah. Everything is virtual with yeah. them. But it's also getting information to owners, you know, sitting down with VR headsets and stuff so they can visualize and see what their space is going to look like. And it's and feel the scale. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's unlocking the different pieces of hardware and technology that go along with it, you know, yeah. the, the photo documentation and stuff where owners can log in from anywhere and they can take a tour of their construction job site yeah. and look around and identify and see what's going on on site every day. Okay. So. In the safety and comfort of your own computer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of just the, the broad sweeping picture of, of VDC. Adam, can you give us a little bit of how you use it on a day-to-day -day basis? So there, there's a variety of tasks that I can do during the day. A lot of it is just keeping the information moving uh, or reacting to a request. So like maybe one of our subcontractor who is modeling their portion for like the shop drawing phase or for coordination, they might need AutoCAD plans of the drawings and we only have Revit models. Yeah. So I can export that information for them and send it their way without involving the architect or making a request, which adds time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So shortening up that interval from when the request comes to when they get the information that they need to keep moving. Yeah, exactly. We get a lot of drone images mm -hmm. of the site plan. And so we can use that for the job sites. Uh, the guys in the trailer can look at it and organize where their building materials are going or where the activities are happening. And we'll take like the CAD foundation plans and yep. we'll overlay it on the site so they can see where the, the stuff is happening and yeah. not park their trailer where they need <laughs> yeah. a dig or something. I was just thinking to myself, <laughs> I remember the interesting days before the drone logistic plans, you know, and 
they'll say superintendent says, okay, go park your stuff up in the northwest corner of the project site. Right? Yeah. Go there, northwest corner. Well, that means something different to anybody, right? <laughs> and, and, and so inevitably they would go park it probably right where he didn't want it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now with those those logistics plans, I mean, you're you're pinpointing it, you're showing them accurately, and yeah. people know you know any visuals you can use in construction, and just the managing of people just help absolutely, you know, and, and it helps re- reduce the rework of whatever it is. Yeah, that's been fun for me to be a part of. You know, as the marketing guy, I can fly the drones and take these big composite images and, and crash them. And, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> only that, that once. One, one time. Only once. <laughs> That's a future episode. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's just so cool to be able to then use this image to visualize, hey, this is what the site looks like in real time compared to the plans and, you know, right. where things are going to be and, and what's happening next that they can look at it and be like, oh, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks and there's a bunch of dirt, you know, on this side of the site now. Let's get a new flyover and we just update that image and then it's current to what our guys out in the field are experiencing every day, which is just uh, that's so cool. That's a good way to get the exterior. Another thing we do is. Uh, laser scanning yeah. of interior spaces. Well, and we can do exterior spaces too, but when you bring the laser scan inside, you don't have to take a tape measure and measure every window and every door. You don't have to know that the wall is straight. It could be uh, kicked at an angle or something and the laser scanner just captures all that. You can bring it all right back to the computer and start using that information. Yeah. And that reality capture, it doesn't lie. You know, yeah. <clears throat> we had guys that were, were heading out were with tape measures and we're going to measure it. And so they measured it and they modeled it. And when they brought it back, it was like, this still doesn't look right. So Adam went out and he spent, you know, a couple hours out with the laser scanner and he came back and he's like, you guys are off by feet, Yeah, you know? And, <laughs> and when you think about it, yeah. it's like, you know, that's, that information is instant and it's there. Yep. And, you know, we had project down in Yankton where we sent the scanner down there and instead of going in with a tape measure yeah. and spending hours and they're measuring everything up, it was two setups with a scanner on, you know, a couple sides of the building and they come back with a point cloud and Adam was able to, you know, go through and model that information. And, <sighs> and you can't forget to measure something. Yeah. Um, yeah. With the laser scanner. It gets everything. It gets everything. Yeah. yeah. And and you always know that anybody that's ever gone out and field measured anything and then taken pictures, what you really want a picture of is six inches to the right of what you took. Exactly. You know, it's, yep. Yep. so this gets everything. The one scan that I took was 900 million points. So <laughs> um, these laser scans are like a photo. Yeah. A 3D photo. So it brings back pixels yeah. and each pixel is assigned a color and that creates the photo, the 3D photo Gosh. of your space. So tell us what that process is. Like, how do you go through a site and, and do a scan? Is it something like that's on your hard hat or do you physically have a camera on a tripod or what do you do? It's a physical scanner. So it's a it's a piece. I mean, there are different models. There's mobile ones that you would carry or wear or yeah. any of that stuff. But ours is actually a physical piece of hardware that you put on a tripod and yeah. you set up and we determine the area we want to scan. We go out there, we set up, we bring it back and then we start assembling those point clouds together and yeah. going through and cleaning and identifying and then aligning it to the real world, to our models. And then away you go. Yeah. Th- this scanner is like a camera, Yeah, but it's it has a motor that spins at 360 degrees while there's a glass lens that's also spinning 360 degrees oh in goodness. a different direction. <laughs> so it's kind of like the information looks like a donut yeah. all coming to a center point. Yeah. And and that uh, cuz it's it's spinning and it's just grabbing all the information in that one plane as yeah. it spins around and it it's, it's crazy. So do you have to like hide every time like get out of the way? You walk around the scanner Behind. as it scans <laughs> so you're never in the So you the just scan. look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you real slowly circling it <laughs> yeah. or leave the room, start it and walk away there or you do go. something else. So that's a perfect segue into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is just the fun toys you guys get <laughs> to use, like VR goggles and all kinds of crazy stuff. So what's what's like your top favorite things to use? What's been game changers for us honestly is the drone has been amazing. Yeah. And, and we're scratching the surface with it. You know, it's like, yeah. not only what do we have, but how else can we use it? You know, Aaron actually came up with an awesome idea on a project of utilizing the drone to actually do visual checks on the building yeah. instead of having a guy in a man basket exactly. for, you know, half a day doing that. It was, yeah. and then just having, you know, honestly, a lot of it is our software. It's so powerful and so intuitive that it's so easy to just quickly find what you're looking for or get that point across. You know, some of the software now is, 
if Aaron's in the model and he's looking at something, he's like, I don't understand how this works. I can log in and I can see where he is in the model and wow. I can click his name and he'll show us where he is and what he's looking at and we can talk about it. You know, Turns out I was in the pond. And, you know, <laughs> 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 We're just getting started in some of it. I mean, there's so much more that we can be doing with it. So. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, there's a lot of people pumping money into technology and construction and there's a lot of different programs, a lot of different cool, fancy things. And trying to really figure out what brings value to to us and our owners and, and trying to reduce rework, whatever it is. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. And I, I think that, you know, just along those lines is looking at where construction is heading. Yeah. You start looking at some of what's coming out. It's, you know, it's the, the biometrics and the wearables and stuff. It's looking at core temperatures of our people in hot temp and it's alerting them, you know, hey, you got take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's hot out here. And. AR safety glasses, yeah, where it'll actually alert you that hey, there's a leading edge here, or there's something here. Wow. That's, and so it's wow, things like that. Yeah, smart hard hats. Yeah. You know, it's some of that stuff is helping with progress schedules. It's helping with your costs because your costs are associated with it. So he's yeah. able to kind of see where he's at for costs and what's installed. Absolutely. And, and I think when you wrap it all together, you know, you're looking. You still got to build things in the field, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But we're looking to do it safer, yep. and we're looking to do it in an efficient manner, and yeah. we're looking to do it once yeah. with, with yeah. no rework. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. The safest work is the work you don't have to do. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we're talking about when we think about doing more than construction, that it's not just, you know, hand some guys some blueprints and say, hey, knock yourselves out. But how can we do this as safely as possible, as efficiently as possible, remove as many clashes with HVAC and plumbing and electrical as possible beforehand mm -hmm. so that we can just go to town and build this thing quickly, efficiently, safely. Another thing we've been looking at is trying to build this stuff offsite and bring it in in pieces. Yeah. So prefabbing like duct mains and piping runs and conduit runs into one unit. So they're only setting one unit in place Yeah. as, as they go along like way quicker. Yeah, absolutely. And when you've got everything dialed in you know, with lasers, yeah, <laughs> you right, can yeah. do, you can do that, right? <laughs> you know, that works. That's just, that's fantastic. How, how have you guys witnessed that side of bringing more than construction? You know, a lot of our subs are, they're very sophisticated, Yeah. you know, and we're going through the process of building this thing virtually and making sure that everything is clash free, coordinated, and then they're utilizing those models then to fab their ducts and their pipes and all that stuff. And they're bringing it to the site already made, already coded, ready to be put into place. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're total confidence that that stuff's going to fit. Yeah. They use those models and the surveying tools and they can pinpoint exactly where their hanger needs to go from the model data. Yeah. And not have to go out there again with the tape measure. They just, once it says this is the point, they just, that's where they put their hanger and they're on to the next one already. They don't have to like go find it, their reference point again and re, re a tape measure. It's there to, to the next point says it goes here and done. Yeah. The amount of work that's able to be placed faster yeah. and safer yeah. is exponentially greater. Which is just what blows my mind about this whole process. I mean, everyone benefits from this. Right. Our company benefits from this. Our people benefit from this. I mean, they're doing it safer. They're doing it quicker. Our subs benefit from this. They're doing it more efficiently. Everyone is saving time. Everyone is saving man hours. And then ultimately our clients benefit from this. You know, they're saving a lot of money in this as well. It's it's just wins all around. And right. it's just such a powerful thing, I think. And construction schedules aren't getting any longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's always a few things that slip through the cracks, but it gets fewer and fewer as you go. Yeah. Not, not at Adam's desk. Though. No, definitely. <laughs> not at Adam's desk. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie was too busy, so a few things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe. But now that Adam's here, now, now, now Jamie will be back on track. No excuses. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This has been awesome. I, I've been looking forward to this and appreciate you guys taking the time to talk VDC. Thank you listeners for tuning in. As always, please remember to follow and share this podcast. That helps us and it helps you stay up to date on new episodes that come out. So thank you again for listening and exploring with us what it means to do more than construction. Until next time.